So we're going to have a look at um, chapter four, and this chapter describes all the procedures relating to SPSV licensing. It's a comprehensive chapter, um, so this is a, a significant uh, piece of work that we have to be prepared for. Okay, now this chapter talks about the vehicle license. It talks about applying for the vehicle license, renewing the license, replacing an expired license, changing the vehicle on a vehicle license, reassigning a vehicle license on the death of a license holder, exchanging the vehicle license for one of a different category. So for, for example, perhaps changing it from taxi to wheelchair taxi and vice versa. And also we talk about surrendering a vehicle license. Now, just as an overview of the vehicle license, okay, just to note here that, by the way, just on my, the right hand side of your screen, that an immigration stamp to or a student visa from the Department of Justice and Equality means that somebody with that visa cannot work in the taxi industry. Okay, now, so what do what the vehicle license permits so the license permits a vehicle to be operated in one of the six categories of taxi okay um what about its period of validity so it's valid for 12 months six months or, or until the vehicle reaches its maximum age limit okay and we've spoken about that before it'll pop up here again it's in appendix a um here we are so a local area hackney 10 years a wheelchair taxi or hackney six years and a limousine has no limit okay now let's look at some of these questions can the vehicle associated with the license be changed yes under certain conditions okay and essentially is that the replacement vehicle is roadworthy suitable for use as a taxi and suitably equipped as we've looked at in previous chapters okay i think that's common sense can more than one vehicle be associated with the license? No. The only one vehicle may be associated with the license at any time. So, you know, it's like it's like your insurance, your tax is attached to that vehicle. OK. Can a vehicle be licensed in more than one category? No. OK. A vehicle is only in one category at a time. Can a vehicle license be transferred to another person? No. However, on the death of a license holder, it can be reassigned to a prior nominee. OK, so you so the, the holder of a vehicle license can nominate a person who, in the event of the license holder's death, may apply to the NTA to continue to operate the license. OK, um, and remember that uh, proviso it really is available for licenses held by individuals. For a license held by a corporate entity, a company, it's not available. To avail of that, the first step for the license holder is to make a nomination to assign a prior nominee by using the form S15N. The nominee will be recorded against the vehicle license specified on the form. And therefore, in the, in the event of the death of the license holder, the nominated person can then apply to the NTA to continue to operate the license. And naturally, that person must satisfy all the conditions that any prospective license holder would have to, to do. OK. And then again, on submitting a successful application, the nominated person becomes the holder of the license and continue to operate it as normal. Now, can a vehicle license held by a company be transferred to another entity? No. So, for example, if the control of a company changes, if it's sold, the license is automatically revoked. It's null and void. Can a vehicle license category be changed? Yes, in specific circumstances. So, for example, from a taxi to a wheelchair taxi or back again. And the holder of a standard taxi license can apply to have the license exchanged for a wheelchair taxi license once naturally all the standards are met. OK, the original license number remains unchanged and. Conversely, license holders who have gone from standard to wheelchair taxi can revert back to the standard as well. 
Again, the original license number remains unchanged. Now, let's look at applying for a vehicle license. Five steps. One, getting the right vehicle. Two, submitting the application. Equipping the vehicle in accordance with the rules. Preparing for the initial suitability inspection. And submitting the vehicle then for its initial suitability inspection. Oh, so getting the right vehicle. Let's look at step one. So a vehicle license can be issued only to a person who is the registered owner of the vehicle, who is legally entitled to the use and possession of the vehicle. So such as under a lease or a hard purchase agreement. And we all know that the cars you know, are being bought, you know, especially for business purposes, sole trader purposes on these PCP and lease agreements. But your name is attached legally to the vehicle. Um, and then for the license uh, to operate as a, ve a vehicle as a taxi, the vehicle must be roadworthy, okay, NCT cert, and it mustn't be older than 90 days before your uh, inspection, okay, standard fare. Suitable, naturally, the vehicle must meet the requirements. And again, there is the suitable vehicle list as per information guide G9. Okay. Again, before submitting the form, you should make sure that your tax affairs are in order. Um, an application relating to a wheelchair taxi must be accompanied by a technical assessor's full report. Now, the VL1 form, okay, the vehicle license form must contain the names of anybody who will drive the vehicle, the contact details for booking the vehicle, the area in which it is proposed to operate, the days and times during which it will be available for hire. An application for a limousine license relating to a modified vehicle must be accompanied by the technical assessor's basic report. An application for a local area hackney license must be accompanied by documentary evidence of the need for a local area hackney license. So you have to satisfy the NTA that there is a demand for a hackney service. If you are not an Irish national, your application must be accompanied by a declaration that the conditions of your permission to remain in Ireland do not preclude you from operating a business or being self-employed in the state. You don't have to apply supply a tax clearance certificate, just your PPS number. If all the required information is received, the NTA will process your application, respond within five working days, we hope. They then send you a conditional offer which specifies a five digit provisional license number. And for taxis and wheelchair taxis, that number is required for, for the taxi meter, for the, for the matching roof sign and taxing branding. Um, this conditional offer is specific to the vehicle identified in the application. It's valid for 90 days. And you, you have this 90 day window then to complete the other steps in the licensing process. And naturally, like any provisional uh, permit or license, it's not a license to operate the vehicle as an SPSV. There's a bit more to do. OK, now equipping the vehicle in accordance with the regulations. Uh, we have to think about safety and passenger communication equipment. And they include a fire extinguisher, capacity of at least two kilos of dry powder. Or equivalent and it must comply with EN3 standard okay being date stored or safely away in the vehicle first aid kit needs to comply with the standard 13164 as recommended by the health and safety authority a high-vis vest that complies with standard EN471 an advanced warning triangle again regulation 27 standard a working handheld torch, pen and paper. Now, you must also display in the vehicle the appropriate so-called in-vehicle information card, and that provides passengers with useful information about their rights and responsibilities. Now, it's just a note here about advertising in all taxis, SPSVs, no advertisement or sign or symbol that contains threatening, discriminatory, ob obscene or offensive words or images may be displayed in or on an SPSV. I mean, it's it's amazing that that, that has to be um, 
mentioned you know i think it's just common sense as, as if maybe perhaps somebody would, would want to do that but anyway it's, it's bureaucracy for you um unless otherwise approved by the nta there's no electronic advertising sign that can be seen from outside the vehicle can be used no sign providing the name details or logo of an industry representative group that can be seen from outside the vehicle may be displayed in or on a taxi so they don't seem to like trade unions and apart from the official taxi branding no sign or ad may be displayed on the front doors of a taxi so it's quite standard fare really that's only allowed now in relation to any side door other than the two front doors the total area occupied by any advertisement and signs must not exceed 1600 square centimeters okay so you know you you'd be talking about your own dispatch operator that's the the, the limit you have now um there is a payment symbol standard that indicates that car payments um are accepted any advertising on the taxi or wheelchair must not appear on the roof sign but they are allowed to display their own dispatch operators contact details on the roof sign naturally you know you'll see that on all taxis and they mustn't reduce the visibility of the word taxi or its irish equivalent taxi um the license number the area sticker or if applicable the accessibility symbol on the roof sign so they take precedence over any contact details and likewise it mustn't any advertisement of contact details mustn't reduce the visibility of the passenger in vehicle information card inside the vehicle so you know the the spsv labels take precedence over any contact information now a hackney or limousine may not display any sign or in, uh, or advertisement unless it has been approved by the nta now let's talk about equipping a vehicle for operation as a taxi or a wheelchair taxi um, they must have the, the taxi meter and printer installed and calibrated in line with the national maximum taxi fare they must have the regulation roof sign carry the approved taxi branding display the in, ve in vehicle information sticker in a visible position in the front passenger area now let's talk about the taxi meter it's an electronic device that is programmed to automatically calculate and display the correct fare it must be securely attached where it's clearly visible connected to a printer for printing receipts they essentially say it should be placed above the dashboard obviously subject to the location of any airbags and every owner or user of a taxi meter must have it verified by the legal metrology service which are part of the national standards authority of ireland and just to confirm that it complies with legal requirements that goes with any business that operates meters like petrol pumps and weighing scales they come under the gaze of the national standards authority of ireland and likewise the taxi meter does so also um the NTA cooperates and shares information with the legal metrology service on the regulation of taxi meters. So it's in everybody's interest to have taxi meters regulated. Again, they must they must be in line um, with the measure, measuring instruments directive from 2006. It's, it's an EU EC regulation. Now the NTA recommend the following when choosing a taxi meter that um you know it's in a suitable location and it's customers can see it clearly and it must not impair your view for driving i can't imagine any taxi driver sticking it on the steering wheel you know you want to uh, consider does the cost of installation include calibration with the maximum taxi fare by the installer do you have to have your taxi meter calibrated by somebody else it's like buying anything you want the path of least resistance you want a one-stop shop who's going to give me the correct meter who's going to set it up can it be easily reprogrammed once a new fare structure comes into effect how much does reprogramming cost what are the operating costs receipt rolls printer etc 
and what is the after sales service offered by supplier again you know word of mouth and things like this it's just advice from the nta again the taxi meter must be installed and programmed before you present your vehicle for the initial suitability inspection um, it must also be programmed with the vehicle registration number, the vehicle license number, and naturally the current fare structure, including correct time and date. And once the vehicle has passed the initial suitability inspection and the license has been issued, you should make an appointment with the legal metrology service to arrange what they call the verification and final sealing of the taxi meter. So everything then is kosher. Now, it is possible to remove a taxi meter from a vehicle and put in another. So, for example, you've changed the vehicle, you know, on your license. Again, it needs to be reprogrammed and because it has to be, you know, aligned to the new vehicle. OK. Um, if you buy a vehicle that has a taxi meter already installed, obviously you need to get relevant documentation. OK. Just a quick look at taxi branding here. Okay, so you can see this is um, quite sparse and to the rules. Okay, now the regulation roof sign, it has the word taxi or it's Irish equivalent taxi. Um, the vehicle license number and the words license number or it's Irish equivalent, Iver Cadunis. Um, the area sticker or stickers indicating the county or counties in which the drivers are licensed. So if the vehicle is driven as a taxi by more than one driver, each of whom is licensed for different counties, a different roof sign may be needed for each driver. I notice, for example, in Waterford City now that a lot of the taxis are licensed to drive in both Kilkenny and, and Waterford, naturally, as their neighbouring counties. Likewise, in Dublin, you'll see Dublin and Meath together. That makes sense. If it's a wheelchair taxi, the accessibility symbol is important. And the regulation roof signs are also permitted to display the official credit or debit card symbol. Um, other credit card logos must not be displayed on the on the regulation roof sign. So it's just a, a generic sign. OK, you couldn't put up Visa or American Express. Uh, contact details for the taxi operator or dispatch operator to which the driver is affiliated common sense and no other information other than the aforementioned can be included on the roof sign uh, and as i've said before details of the taxi operator's representative body cannot be carried on the roof sign they don't like that okay so here we have uh the standard roof sign as viewed from the front okay and the it's a the area is dublin notice the sticker on the left okay and uh, the license number on the right we have the irish and english equivalent and the wheelchair accessible vehicles have the accessibility symbol prominently displayed front and back okay. now the roof sign will naturally incorporate internal electric illumination that is importantly switched on when the vehicle is available for her and switched off then when the vehicle is hired. Additional lights cannot be attached to the regulation roof sign, no Christmas lights, uh, securely mounted but easily removable and naturally it should be mounted in such a way that the details on it are legible from the front and rear of the vehicle. Now this rule that the on a 30 kilometer, kilometer journey the sign can be adjusted to sit longitudinally okay so you just turn it longitudinally and that will apparently conserve fuel however now that must be done with the uh, customer's permission okay and all these details are again described in the initial suitability inspection manual um, the roof sign must be removed from the vehicle when it's in a public space while not being operated as a taxi. Okay, so if you're using it to bring the kids to school, um, the roof sign should be off. Now, preparing for the initial suitability inspection, step four, insurance, naturally, valid cert, NCT, no older than 90 days, 
copy of the technical assessor's full or basic report if it's relevant. Uh, submitting the vehicle then it takes place at one of the vehicle licensing centres around the country. So, for example, there's one in Kilkenny. I, I noticed there where they do the um, the NCTs. And naturally, the inspection is designed to verify that the vehicle meets the requirements. Uh, your tax clearance status and insurance cover will be checked again on the day of inspection. And once you have satisfied the licensing conditions, your vehicle has passed the inspection. The inspector records the details on the register and the tamper proof discs are applied front and rear. And you're ready to go. The license may be valid for one year, six months or until the vehicle reaches its maximum age limit. Now, renewing your vehicle license. A vehicle license is normally valid for 12 months from the date of the issue. OK, now vehicles that are over 10 years old are licensed for a maximum of six months at a time. Now, there's an exception. Uh, vehicles licenses as limousines that were first registered before January 1, 1980. Um, licenses for such vintage limousines are renewed for 12 months. OK, so there's a proviso there. Uh, a little get out clause for vintage limousines. OK, vehicles that are approaching their maximum age limit are licensed only until that age limit. So the vehicle's 10th or 15th birthday. OK. A local area Hackney license can be renewed only after only until three years after it was first granted. OK. Now, so these are license renewal transactions. So you can see the license category in history down the left hand column and the maximum age. So a standard, let's just look at one or two of these. So a standard taxi license numbered below 45,000 on which there has been no change of vehicle since the 1st of January 2013. They have a maximum age of 15 years. OK, and that applies to the standard uh, Hackney license as well. OK, so wheelchair uh, accessible taxi license. If there's no change of vehicle since the 1st of April 2014, the maximum age there's no limit. OK change of vehicle since the 1st of April 2014, 15 years. Okay. Um, again, you can see the limousine license. There's no limit. And just keep an eye on that information there. Okay. Change of vehicle transactions. Okay. So the license category in history is standard taxi. Okay. 10 years and so on. Okay. And age limits on wheelchair taxis as well limousine again no limit no. exchange of license okay so the holder of a standard taxi license can apply to exchange their license for a wheelchair license or vice versa and the maximum age for the vehicle in these transactions is six years for the wheelchair taxi replacing a standard taxi and the converse a standard taxi replacing a wheelchair taxi 10 years okay now, the license can be renewed up to 60 days before its expiry date, and the new license period starts the day following the expiry of the old license. So there's no disadvantage in renewing early. And as a courtesy, the NTA will notify you before the license expires with a reminder. Now, again, if the vehicle passes the license renewal assessment, the license inspector updates the details on the register, removes the old tamper proof discs, applies the new ones. OK, now, importantly, don't remove the tamper discs from the vehicle yourself. If you do not have the tamper proof discs, you need to contact the NTA. OK. Because the renewal cannot be completed unless they are surrendered to the licensing inspector. OK, tamper proof discs remain the property of the NTA at all times. OK, now replacing an expired vehicle license. Um, if your vehicle license expires, you can within 12 months of its expiry date apply to have it replaced okay um a local area hackney license however cannot be renewed or replaced after three years from its original first issue date it needs the application needs to be put in again you need to make the case for 
a local area hackney. Additional fees for replacing an expired license and however it's not possible to replace any vehicle license that's expired more than 12 months. Now changing the vehicle on an SPSV license um, again naturally you can change it provided the replacement vehicle is roadworthy and suitable for use and suitably equipped. Okay what to do with the vehicle being replaced before you dispose of the vehicle that you are replacing on the license you should remove the tamper proof discs uh, front and rear you must bring these to the initial suitability inspection of the new replacement vehicle um, on a taxi or wheelchair taxi remove the roof sign that can be used on the replacement vehicle um, remove the taxi meter and printer again they can be used in their new vehicle but of course they must be programmed and calibrated to that replacement vehicle uh, remove the branding from the front doors of the vehicle and they must be used only on the vehicle specified on your license you must get new branding for the replacement vehicle the required documentation as usual pps insurance cert nct um, if you're exchanging a vehicle license for one of a different category um, the holder of a standard license can swap as i've said before to the wheelchair license once the vehicle license meets the required standards the original license remains number remains unchanged if you're surrendering a vehicle license this is important final point it is permanently and irreversibly deactivated a vehicle license sh should therefore be surrendered only by a vehicle license holder who intends and is satisfied that the vehicle li the license will never be operated again okay so th look there's a lot of information there on on chapter four everybody they're the key points i haven't missed anything um we'll talk about it again in class i hope we'll set a quiz or two on it i hope it's it's some way to keep you in touch while we're not having face-to-face -to -face classes we'll talk soon